to be speaking about us or about you. So let us tune ourselves or our ears to them to listen to their ex opinions or about, uh, about their experience of their principle. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to welcome our moderator, Ma'am Yasmin Ara Hussein. Ma'am, please come and take your place here in that place. Ma'am Yasmin is a teacher and headmistress of Maria Montessori House of Children Elementary School. She has an experience of 20 years of teaching in the school. She also a faculty of Teachers Resource Center under Maria Montessori House of Children, providing training to the teachers in the Montessori method. She is currently teaching in history and civics in the elementary level. Ma'am, this afternoon we are happy to have you here as a moderator for the student panel discussion. Thank you for having accepted our invitation and sparing your time with us to help our students and our principals with your experience and expertise. I would like to uh, ask our DBI students to welcome you with the Fulham Gamusha and DBI scarf. Let's put our hands together for Man Yasmin. And now let us welcome to, uh, to the dice our main protagonist of this afternoon, and that is the students. When, uh, we have five schools coming from Gohati City, so I will call out your name and you can come and take your place. Your name is already being placed, so please come forward. We have from Maharishi Vidya Mandir Senior Secondary School, Silpakurkri, Gohati. Uh, Migranif Korshit Sarma of class 12 and Parthoprotim Oroy class 12. Then we hear from San Francisco Desels Narangi Gohati, Adi Singha and Umilata Umi Pratak of class 9 and class 11. <laughs> then from Maria Public School we have Madulal As Islam and Irika Bardalai of class 11. Then we have from St. Mary's High Sin Higher Secondary School, Jaishila Sharma of Class 10, and Ayan Kika Ogaswami, Class 10. Then we have from Don Bosco School, Pambaza, Divyanshi Gogoi, and Dilshad Ahmed Talukdar of Class 11. So let's put our hands together and welcome them all on the dice. As they are seated, we would like to welcome them to DBI with a DBI scarf. So I request the students to welcome them with DBI scarf. So now I hand over the mic to the moderator, Ma'am Yasmin Hussein, to take over the session. Good afternoon to each one of you all. Uh, after the lunch session, you must be sleepy, but we, uh, you know, uh, want to have a very interesting session. And uh, so this is, the theme is, I'm going to moderate the panel discussion, the theme being my ideal principle. Now, before I start, I say that my principle in my school days was very inspiring and motivating. Yes, we used to do a lot of, you know, we were disobedient, we were called into office. We first felt that it, was, it had a very negative impression, but it turned out to be positive in the sense that it had instilled in me some confidence 
and I'm being very responsible and I turn the table, you know, towards positivity. Whatever negative comments that I had received, I had turned into a positive one and which was highly appreciated by my principal. And I think I'm here because of my principal. So, to start and initiate the discussion, we would like to hear from each one of the participants about their experiences with the principal. It can be, it may have a very positive impact or a negative in your school life because it was towards the end of your school life. So you must have interacted with your principal. So please share your experiences with everybody. So first, uh, I would like to start with SFA school. Good afternoon to all the dignitaries. Uh, I am Adi Singha, and I am from St. Francis DCL School, Guwahati. Uh, I am a new student in St. Francis DCL School, but, and it has, been my first experience to be in a Catholic school. But I've never really felt more than grateful to have come to a Catholic school and to experience the different uh, cultures and you know diversity of religions that we can find in Catholic schools. Our principal strongly believes in fostering a child in their way. We have various clubs and extracurricular activities. And it's not like our father uh, makes them do all the activities, but only the activities that can truly empower the child. For instance, uh, I'm a very good debater. I'd like to acknowledge that. So he always uh, sends me to competitions and tournaments out here. And it has been my first time that, you know, I felt that father, a father from a Catholic institution, it's really good. Yeah, that's what I'm... Very motivating. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, St. Mary's. Very good afternoon to everyone present here. I'm Ayanika Goswami, a student of class 10 from St. Mary's Higher Secondary School. First of all, I'd like to state uh, that I want, I want to thank all the teachers and our respected principal for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this international conference. As a student of St. Mary's, since I was in class KG, I felt that the teachers, the sisters, and most importantly, the principal has provided us with a lot of guidance. The current principal of St. Mary's High Secondary School is not just an authoritative figure who enforces rules and regulations, but guides us with loving kindness. She, te she teaches us to be more cooperative. She supports us in every way possible. And for that, she has um, made us into different groups, into houses, encouraging us to explore the different horizons that life has provided us. Our school is a sanctuary of knowledge where we are not entitled to only study and mug up the lessons that we are taught, but explore the different horizons, the different things that life provides. And that is why I respect the school as well as the principal of St. Mary's High Secondary School who has transformed me and I believe my fellow friends into the people that we are today. Thank you. Thank you. That's because your principal have given you the freedom to explore things. Thank you so much. Next, Don Bosco. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vanshi Gogoi from Don Bosco School, Pan Bazaar. 
Um, I've been a, a student of Don Bosco School from class three onwards, and overall, it has been an extremely uh, well put together, well put together experience in the sense that uh, there can be. Uh, well-established notion that Don Bosco only focuses on academics or on uh, rigorous <coughs> studies, but uh, my experience with the school has been such that uh, we have been encouraged to explore um, all all stratas of life in the uh, not only in the academic sphere but also in the non-academic sphere. Recently, uh, we had the school elections. Me and my friend here, we both. Uh, stood up uh, for, <coughs> we, we both contested the elections and uh, I think it goes on to reinforce the idea that uh, our principal, our school management has always been super supportive of uh, students and, we, and they have encouraged us to be the best versions of ourselves. Thank you. That's because your principal wants to enhance your leadership qualities. Thank you so much. Next, Maharishi. Hello everyone. So, my name is Priyanka Kaushik Sharma, and I am from Maharishi Vidya Mandir, Silpakuri, Guwahati. So, regarding my experience with our principal, madam, some of you might find it funny. Some of you might find it emotional. So, f I have been studying in Maharishi Vidya Mandir from class one, and from that age, I have been knowing from people that our principal, madam, is the most strict one in all of Guwahati. And so there is a fear that I have for her. So what happened that one day, my class teacher, she suddenly she came to me and she said that, Mirganav, you have been selected to be the advisor of your house. So next week there is a ceremony. I was afraid because I knew that Principal Madam will be giving us the badges. And going around Principal Madam just gives me thrills and nightmares. So I went somehow. Here is our NCC, there is our NCC teacher, Hita Sharma. So he taught us how to parade on that day because it should look nice. I practiced very well and I knew all the steps. But the moment when I saw my principal, I forgot everything. <laughs> well, I went near her and then suddenly, she told me, oh, you want to be a politician? Someone might have told her. And this gave me more horror, to be honest. I was very much afraid. And I was shaking like this. Suddenly, she came near me and she holded my hands. And she said, why are you afraid, bacha? So just this, these small words, it just made me feel something very different. So these small words, it made me feel very different. And at that moment, she, I felt like this, she is my very own, my family member. And to be honest, from that day onwards, whenever I went to her, I always feel safe. That fear, from that day onwards, it was just gone. And so it was a nice experience because being principals, you are a leader. And when you are a leader, you should understand the emotions of your people. So she knew. Thank you. Next, Maria's Public School. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mikdarul Islam from Maria's Public School. And I've been a student of Maria's Public School since last eight years. Uh, I'm in class 11 science. And my experience in the school has been like a lot of with a lot of laugh and a lot of uh, crying situations. And I could like to share one of my favorite memories from last year. And it was like uh, about an incident that changed my whole course of class 10th. Uh, so what happened was, uh, I'm, uh, like, I'm a bit of, I'm a bit mischievous in the class. And often I bunk the classes. And that's a very ba bad habit of mine. And I was always warned about it by my teachers and even my parents. So uh, what happened was once I sneak out of the class during the physics period with uh, five or six of my friends and we went around the school and like uh, in the end of the period we are caught 
and we were caught in a very bad manner and while we were like jumping out of the window <laughs> then like uh, our class teacher sh uh, she called us uh, f from that uh, from the from the teacher who caused caught us then when we arrived at, at our class we saw that our vice principal sir uh, anjan gogoi sir he was already there and we knew what was coming for us so like uh, he was very disappointed with us and even my class teacher because i was the class captain of this class and i i was involved in this and i, I feel very sad because uh, ma'am trusted me so much and i broke her trust so we are called to the principal's office and our parents numbers were like taken down and we are told that our parents will be called and then we are sent back to our classes but uh, i took one uh, very brief st step i called out the ones who were with me and we went to the staff room we called out our uh, class teacher and we apologized to her and she told me that uh, she wanted he or she always wanted the best for us and she never uh, really liked her student doing this and even she trusted me so much and i broke the rules so we are taking to the principal office again and we apologize and for the whole year i never bunked the classes again and there's been a very great improvement for me and i have lost that habit of bunking classes and i am very thankful to our principal uh, vice principal sir and our class teacher for that thank you thank you so you have learned a lesson well now i would request uh, students from maharishi to pre make a presentation on the question how to foster a culture of collaboration and feedback among teachers and students so good afternoon to one and all present here hello dignitaries and all i am parthotim roy a student of class 12 of maharishi vidya mandir and you know my friend uh, breganup from some time earlier so we were given the topic that how to foster a culture of collaboration and uh, feedback among our teachers and students the world in this present day has changed very much due to many events like the uh, covid pandemic and the other global events that are happening so as students we have to transform and this need to transform has become more important than ever before but when we want to transform we can have new ideas but what we need is our supportive teachers who can guide those ideas to their meaningful end whatever you want to do we can do only with the support of our teachers in a environment which is not uh, like dominating or stuff but collaborative and understanding from both uh, the perspective of student and the teacher now i'd like to give my mic to uh, my fellow friend breganov thank you partha so first of all the topic is the co uh, the word collaboration so before collaboration we need to understand what makes a person collaborate i guess it's the environment when someone feels safe they will co collaborate eventually so our first goal is should be to make the environment comfortable for us like here today the environment is so comfortable that we can speak from our own so like that we need to create an environment for students so that they feel comfortable there and the same environment should be for the teachers so they can give their opinions they can give their ideas to the students now partho and i we are in a team that is making an artificial intelligence chatbot via which we will ensure that there is a proper environment for both teachers and students because sometimes you see to create this culture of collaboration we need to create a culture of safe environment and sometimes what happens in a class for example we are discussing some important topics sometimes some controversial topics so sometimes there are chances that someone in the class might get a little offended by the things at that point of time what our chatbot it does is it basically finds out the offensive i uh, offensive write ups offensive words and then it suggests the teachers something else that might not sound offensive to anybody 
and we are here suggesting because we are not correcting here because when you are correcting a teacher there are ethical concerns that one might face secondly we need to ensure that students and teachers don't have some uh, rigid hierarchical form see hierarchy is important in a society in a school also because if there is no presence of hierarchy there will be a lot of anarchy to be honest but the hierarchy it should have a balance because when there will be a balance teachers and students they can freely discuss things in uh, our schools we last year i was in the group that uh, ensured the functioning for our nl function so at that moment we learned a lot of things on how to arrange a event how to host guest and etc so such kind of thing in that moment our teachers and we we worked together and there's no form of hierarchy between us we suggested different ways to our teachers our teachers also took our suggestions so if we create that kind of environment students can also learn and even teachers can also develop themselves so continuing on the point that my friend megana was saying like about the ai tool it's not meant to be corrective or for the teachers or something it's supposed to be complementary to the teachers i came around an article that day the some of the scientists have made a kind of a research model based on the chat gpt which you might know the students are using so there the model was that the uh, scientist have told the ai to behave like a uh, socrates socrates was a great greek philosopher what he used to do was he used to ask questions tough questions he did not uh, used to like provide answers he just used to ask questions and those who communicated with him came to know of their true answer by that questions so what we want to do is something similar we do not want to just provide students with answers that won't help them in the future what we want to do is guide them towards the answer which they can with their own effort find out which will not only be uh, improve uh, for their future life because they have done that effort which sometimes teachers are very like uh, critical of using internet devices because the internet provides the answers straight up and the students do not have to do anything else but so we have also tried to like uh, resolve that topic other than that we what we can do is peer observations and feedback are also very important so for peer observations in our schools once a teacher she starts a chapter she or he starts a chapter students are asked to explain parts of it so that they can collab with each other and they can understand the things better and for the feedback after they have explained the teacher will give a feedback on the following thing and after the teacher has explained the student can also give feedback so such kind of things make the environment more friendly and the idea of collaboration gets more highlighted in such environments that will be all right okay thank you now now the next team don bosco school will present on the question how can the principal promote innovation and creativity in teaching and learning thank you ma'am uh, good afternoon everybody present so first of all i would like to uh, point out some uh, things that i think i feel that the students are concerned about uh, first of all i think that uh, in generally we feel that there is a generation gap between the principal and the students that we they won't understand what what is our thoughts about different things different uh, different issues that are concerned about our lives we feel that they may not understand us so because of that feeling there is uh, somewhere or the other a communication gap that develops between the principal and the student like we don't feel free to express ourselves like at this point like how we are communicating among ourselves among all the dignitaries present here i feel we should initiate such uh, discussions we should initiate such meetings regularly between the principal and the students where the principal directly involves into the discussion with the students where we can talk about our concerns 
we can talk about the recent uh, in in the in the era of digital creativity in the era of uh, uh, digital media we can talk about what are the things that concern us like uh, we, we can talk about cyber crime mental health issues I think that is the most uh, recently we have uh, gained an awareness among the students about the issues like mental health and uh, I think we should be able to point out these issues um, in, in an open discussion uh, platform with our principal so that there is we can reduce the communication gap that we face Secondly, uh, I think it's a, a very great initiative to uh, and uh, to reform and innovate in the school setting. Secondly, I think uh, in this uh, to promote digital creativity uh, through social media because most of the students uh, in today's era are uh, on are available on social media. We use social media regularly, so we should uh, we should uh, uh, create newsletters every month. Uh, and we can where we can show and showcase our creativity like uh, someone is good in illustration someone is good in digital art drawings digital art someone is good in content writing someone is good in information collecting researching so we can combine all those people from the school we can identify those people and uh, to, to promote school leadership we can uh, create clubs where they can uh, publish such newsletters to the social media every month where we can discuss about the student achievements all over the world what is going on around in and around the school what are the uh, policies that are being carried out for the student well-being so these are the points that I wanted to uh, present today and now my friend Devan Shiko, we will continue good afternoon again um, as my learned friends from Maharishi have already pointed out about peer learning, I would like to add some points uh, related to it. Peer learning um, is a mechanism where children, uh, students learn from each other, learn with each other. Um, I feel that the principal and the school management should encourage uh, symposiums and role playing among students so that they uh, revise previously learned material. At the same time, they're able to um, improve their speaking skills, improve their vocabulary and their confidence while talking or interacting with an audience. And they will also get a taste. They will also be able to appreciate what a teacher does. Sec uh, the second suggestion I would like to make is uh, incorporating book clubs into the non-academic curriculum of the school. Um, I myself am an avid reader and I feel that there is a, l there is a world beyond textbooks and uh, that should be encouraged by the principal and the school management. There can be discussions among students themselves which can be moderated, managed by the students and they'll be able to uh, discuss about uh, the topics and the uh, subject matters that they have read about in their books. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I request uh, students from Maria's Public School to present the question, how school principals can promote media literacy, media ethics, and media criticism among future leaders? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, Erika Bordeloy, from Marius Public School. So firstly, uh, I believe that the internet has ample opportunities to help us in growth, but one needs to make the best use of this opportunity. Our generation is very much inclined towards the use of social media, but we must also be aware of the risks and vulnerabil vulnerabilities associated with it. Our school, headed by our principal, holds workshops for students about the healthy use of social media, its pros and cons, and also about cyber crimes, including cyber bullying. Also, Maria, Maria's Public School has opened the Model United Nations portal back in 2015 which has a student-led media corp. Moreover, our principal has also established a media team in the student council, also in our round square council, and will be also establishing one in our upcoming AFS team. Also, nowadays, we need to share a lot of information about children for the collaborative projects with national and international platforms. 
Our principal makes it a point to reach out to the parents for consent, for a while sharing the student profiles with the other organization. So I think this is something that an idle principal must be aware of and execute it. So uh, I hand over the mic to Migdadul. Thank you. I could like to continue on the topic my friend Erika has spoken. Nowadays, we are well aware of the social media and the chats that are happening. One very common thing is that the use of personal photographs of students of, or of teenagers in uh, various illegal activities. And we should ensure that, the school should ensure that such activities doesn't occur and the students are well aware that not, of not posting anything online without their uh, without, uh, without uh, proper knowledge of what uh, about the consequences for safeguarding a student's privacy and avoiding any such issues happening from in the school uh, campus our principal uh, uh, conducts uh, awareness sessions about it and uh, and we also have a, a free period uh, that's held every friday or thursday and uh, there is uh, that's it, that is known as the circle time where we talk about topics like this and our class teachers they point out new topics about the growing concern of uh, social media threats and other uh, issues about it and uh, we also have our team of uh, media who uh, from time to time they provide us uh, news and and the other uh, issues that affect us from the social media and uh, that's why we are well aware of what uh, what happening what is happening we also follow the guidelines drawn by our principal so that we can make uh, based of the facilities saving ourselves from all the troubles thank you thank you the next school, SFA's High Secondary School, I would like to request you to present the question, how can my principal foster a culture of digital citizenship and responsibility in the era of social media and emerging technologies? Thank you, ma'am, for the question. Technology is the wizardry of our age, the spell book of innovation, where electrons dance, codes whisper secrets, and machineries weave the tapestry of progress. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I, Unmilita Pathak, and I, Adi Singha, take our stand here, not just as advocates for education, but as someone deeply invested in the question of how we, as a school community, can foster this culture, that the culture of digital citizenship and responsibility. As students, we immerse ourselves in the vast ocean of the so-called parallel existence of social media. Yet, the role of a principal becomes pivotal in guiding us towards the responsible, respectful, and ethical digital engagement. Before delving into the strategies of fostering this culture, let us understand some of the few concepts of the current educational landscape. So I would like to highlight four such concepts of the current educational landscape. Number one is technological integration. Educational institutions are increasingly incorporating certain digital tools as well as interactive social platforms so as to enhance their traditional teaching methods. Number two is collaborative learning. Technology facilitates collaborative learning in a way that students can connect with the peers and educators globally, thus resulting in certain kinds of valuable online discussions. Number three is online learning. The rise of online learning and virtual uh, classrooms have gained much more momentum as we can see from the recent example of COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, I would like to mention the point of preparation for future careers. 
in this current education landscape preparing for future careers does on not only limit ourselves to only academic knowledge but also through practical skills and adapting to technical literacy now all these benefits are undeniable yet we should also focus on the point that this digital landscape also possess certain specific challenges like cyberbullying misinformation and other online privacy concerns which requires the demand of our attention so how to address this kind of issues to answer this question i would like to hand over the mic to adi let's understand what digital citizenship is digital citizenship is the ability to engage in a positive ethical online behavior and understand the impact of our actions in a digital space so in order to embody digital citizenship we need to equip ourselves with some certain knowledge in the following areas and that are digital literacy online etiquette privacy and security and finally prevention from cyberbullying now let's get into the heart of the topic and that is how can our school instill and foster the culture of digital citizenship well uh, for instance our school has taken proactive steps in instilling digital citizenship skills and ensuring the ensuring the vision and mission of the 21st century skills firstly i'd like to point out student involvement by involving them in conversations and decision making skills we can ensure that students feel their voices matter secondly i'd like to point out parental collaboration and that is the most important point i'd say we must equip parents with the necessary knowledge so that they can support their child even at home to be responsible digital citizens thirdly we have continuous professional development i'd encourage every school to provide continuous professional digital development to the teaching faculty so that they can stay informed about the latest di digital trends and make according changes in their teaching methods to make students study effectively and fourthly i have media literacy education you know social media is a parallel existence and so we need an institution to help students discern credible sources and combat misinformation and also to make them understand the impact of their online presence this isn't just a call to action this is an invitation to be architects of a digital culture defined by collaboration empathy and integrity <coughs> our collective efforts today will mold the digital citizens of tomorrow so are you ready to be part of the digital legacy we can all be proud of i hope so you are thank you for your time and attention thank you now i request the students of st mary's high secondary school to speak on role of principals in fostering self directed learning good afternoon to all today i jayshila sharma along with my friend ainika guswami are here to give our views on the role of principals in fostering self directed learning in schools so what is self directed learning self directed learning is a process where individuals take initiative to identify their learning needs setting goals and independently acquire knowledge and skills this approach gives the students control of their educational journey so that they can choose the content pace and the methods that best suit their preferences and needs a principal plays a very crucial crucial role in implementing self directed learning in schools i would like to highlight some points 
Introduction of voc Vocational Education Quoting James Truslow Adams, there are two types of education, one that teaches us how to live and the other that teaches us how to make a living. Vocational education teaches us how to make a living. Vocational education is crucial as it equips individuals with practical skills, preparing them for specific tasks. Students can use their class concepts in research so that they can develop as individuals. This approach encourages learners to take charge of their education, setting goals and acquiring skills independently. A great example of a school that follows vocational education is the, is the SEC Mall introduced by Mr. Sonam Wangchuk. Here, uh, skill enhancing uh, courses are given to students who have failed in their 10th exam. Next up, we have providing resources. School principals play a pivotal role in promoting self-directed learning by providing resources. Access to well-equipped library, modern technology, counselors, etc. empower students to explore subjects independently. Principals can allocate funds for educational tools, online resources and extracurricular activities and foster a dynamic learning environment. Adequate resources not only supports diverse learning styles, but also encourages students to pursue individual interests and projects. Moving on, we have organizing field researches. Principles organizing field research is significantly contributing to the self-directed learning. Field research exposes students to real-life applications of theoretical knowledge, sparking curiosity and independent exploration. Field experiences encourages autonomy by allowing students to formulate their research methods and methodologies. By providing these immersive learning experiences, principals enable students to develop self-directed learning habits, instilling a lifelong love for inquiry. Next, we have providing feedback. Feedback plays a vital role in fostering self-directed learning. When students, teachers, and parents give constructive feedback, it offers valuable insights into the effectiveness of educational approaches and resources. Principals can use this feedback to tailor the learning environment, adjusting policies, and refining teaching methods. By actively listening to the school community, principals can address individual needs, encourage autonomy, and enhance the overall learning experience. Now, I would like to hand over the mic to my friend, Ainika Guswam. Continuing with the points stated by Jashila, another point is the implementation of meditation. The implementation of meditation in schools by principals serves as a powerful catalyst for promoting self-directed learning. Meditation cultivates mindfulness enhances students' creativity, manages stress, and regulates their emotions. As a result, students become more attuned to their individual learning needs and preferences. This mindful approach not only enhances academic performance, but also empowers students to take charge of their own learning journey, fostering a culture of self-directed exploration and discovery. Yet another point to be noted is the introduction of value education in schools. Introducing value education by principals is paramount for fostering self-directed learning. Values provide a moral compass, guiding students in making informed decisions and setting meaningful goals. By incorporating ethical principles and social responsibility. Into the educational framework, principals cultivate a holistic approach to self-directed learning. In conclusion, principals play a pivotal role in fostering self-directed learning within educational institutions. Their leadership is instrumental in creating an environment that encourages 
autonomy, critical thinking, and a passion for continuous learning. By providing resources, promoting collaboration, and embracing innovative approaches like meditation and value education, principles empower students to take charge of their educational journey. Through these efforts, principles not only prepare students for academic success, but also equip them with the skills and mindset necessary for success and a lifetime of self-directed exploration and growth. In essence, the role of principles is foundational in shaping students into independent, motivated and lifelong learners. I would like to end our presentation with a quote by Benjamin Franklin. It goes, Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. But involve me and I learn. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so enriching and they have highlighted on some specific points. So uh, those were specific questions which were given to the schools, but now we come to some random questions, but which are very important for them. Uh, you know, we wish to discuss here, so that a lot of other points come up as related to the specific answers that you have got. So first of all, uh, the we find that there are a lot of, you know, student-related issues. Uh, very recently, I've been hearing about body shaming, anxiety, separation anxiety, then stress, academic stress, and, you know, there are a lot of other issues which the uh, students face. So, I think I would like to initiate a discussion on how will the uh, principal make the students more resilient to these issues? I think you can quickly give your, uh, you can quickly discuss, start discussing from Maria's public school first. Any one of you is ready with the answer? You want to initiate discussion? Yes, please start. Ma'am, first of all, regarding body shaming, ma'am, it's uh, becoming a very serious issue. And uh, there is only one way through which we can solve it, through discussion and through self-help groups. Because most of the time, why body shaming happens? Because people are not aware that our friends might have been suffering from some kind of diseases or anything else conditions. So when we will discuss it, when we will know each other more, I guess then we will be, uh, we'll be in a position to understand them better. And uh, regarding the anxiety and depression and stress, uh, meditation and yoga it has been beneficial in a lot of ways for controlling on the human stress, human anxiety. And stress and anxiety at today's world is very basic thing because the structures that has been made in our today's modern day makes our lives more complex, which results in such kinds of stress, depression, or anxiety. Okay. TMCD program is can TMCD program which is in Maharishi Vitamani. It helps a lot while we are fighting with anxiety or stress or personal issues. Okay. Thank you so much. Next, anybody would like to answer? Yes. As my learned friend has already pointed out, a discussion is only the way, uh, the only way forward. And uh, I also would like to suggest that uh, schools should start conducting seminars and workshops, uh, inviting personalities who um, are uh, well known, who have a public, uh, who have a public, uh, public image of. Uh, of motivating youngsters to feel good about their body, to feel good about themselves. Um, and uh, also our school already provides counseling services and I, and I feel that all, all schools should incorporate counseling services, uh, which should be anonymous. Uh, secondly, um, 
When it comes to anxiety and stress related to academics or uh, exams, uh, I feel that uh, we should uh, we should have we should pay better attention to students who do not do well in exams. Give them that opportunity to grow their self confidence back through whether it is through counselling or whether it is through personalised learning plans and I think the teachers themselves should change their attitude towards low performing students um, and treat all students equally. Ma and give them activities which can actually build their confidence. Sure. Yes? yes? Yeah. So we go to another random question. Anybody can answer? Okay. Any Behind every progressing and performing school there is always a great principle. What makes the principle great? Uh, SFS school, students from SFS school, would you like to answer? Okay. St. Mary's would like to. Thank you for this question, ma'am. Well, I believe that a good school is always the, uh, made by the efforts of a great principal. From my perspective, an ideal principal is someone who is approachable, someone who, with whom we can share our thoughts, our feelings, and someone who is understandable. A principal who motivates us in our assemblies, uh, provides us counseling sessions, and always uh, tells us to celebrate each and every moment of our life is one principal who is a great one. A principal has a famous quote before each and every exam, celebrate your exams. No matter if you're not prepared, no matter if you're not school well, but celebrate each and every moment of your life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other panelists? Yes, Maria's public school. I believe an ideal principal practices what they preach. They are disciplined, punctual, and confident. When a principal aligns their actions with the expectations and values they communicate, they set a powerful example for the entire school community. And uh, an ideal principal should encourage co curricular activities which help students to multitask between the academics and the other areas which are important in life. The inclusion of the co-curricular activities uh, to be curricular definitely helps in the learning phase of a student for the future multitasking world where one will live. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, SFS school. What makes the principal great? Whenever you travel by school bars and there is a competition going on inter school, we get to hear, you know, as a teacher, the principal is great. But what makes the principal great? As our mot motto suggests, uh, touching lives and molding futures. Our principal has always been collaborative not only with students and parents, students and teachers, but also with parents. We anchor, our principal has initiated a program where parents' representatives are being put in front. And also, a prince, uh, my ideal principal would be someone who can address issues of students like body shaming as you said ma'am and uh, someone who can uh, conduct campaigns you know peer support uh, programs are really efficient in terms of problems like this and I would say uh, counseling sessions counselors play a very big role in a student's life so my ideal principle would be someone who can Counsel uh, who can give great advice and can, uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Right. So, you considered your principal to be great? Surely. Yes. Yes. Maharishi. As to, as we come to the discussion of what makes a principal great, it inadvertently makes me remind me of my own principal, ma'am. Now, when I was young, I didn't know we were all basically scared of her but as we grew up our teachers 
and principal ma'am ma'am let us by her example um, she is someone who has suffered great hardship but she still stands strong let me share one of those stories with you ma'am recently around after the covid pandemic i think ma'am uh, suffered a tumor in her brain which led her to uh, bed rest in the hospital but she has such a great work ethics she stayed uh, she was advised by her doctor that she won't be able to come to school for about a month but she challenged the doctor that i have worked there and she came back to school in about 2 weeks after her surgery was over but after we listen to that but we were all shocked because whenever we hear such a thing like someone had a brain tumor or something we think that person will be lost of all hope but when we talked to her she was full of hope and like she was full of energy she encouraged us that whatever be the hardships may be in your life you cannot like uh, go away from that you cannot run away from that you will have to embrace it and then do the best you can ma'am that will be all. thank you so much that was really touching don bosco school yes ma'am as you uh, asked the question uh, what makes a principal great i think first of all the principal is the prime coordinating person in a school who forms the foundation of the school uh, first of all we, among the teachers and students the coordination that we have the principal is responsible for that and he is handling such a big burden of running an entire institution with thousands of students and faculty members it's a big responsibility which teaches us that how calm and composed he remains despite of the challenges he has to face or she has to face in her everyday life in their everyday life so first of all uh, what i can learn from my principal and i am sure that we all can relate to it that uh, how a principal is calm and composed in every situation and how he knows exactly how to handle every hardship that we may face or he or she is facing in her daily life of administration of management of coordinating with the students and teachers and establishing a friendly a healthy link between them so i think that this word makes a principal great thank you thank you st mary's high secondary school would you like to yes yes said sfs also so now we go to another question and i think uh, i would uh, request the panelists to imagine themselves to be the principal of a school okay 10 years down the line perhaps they become the principal of the school so we are having lot of changes educational change also artificial intelligence coming in digital literacy has made us one global community if you are the principal of a school 10 years down the line how will you inspire your students and motivate your teachers so let me first start with maharishi vidyamandir so being a principal in itself it's a very big job because <laughs> is the principal now <laughs> of a future school thank you and uh, it's really very tough when um, you are a principal because you are not just dealing with any normal things you are dealing with human lives you will be nurturing human lives and uh, since we were talking about ai artificial intelligence it has been growing its market in last few months and very soon in schools also ai integrated education will come in syllabus but one thing is there AI can never replace teachers because the hard work that the teachers are putting, the emotional support that our teachers are giving to us, no AI can never give us that. That's really great. <laughs> But it will help teachers to work more efficiently. Like, for example, when checking copies or evaluating students, AI can help them. and secondly ai can help them to make presentations so that they can explain chapters or concepts to their students more easily 
Furthermore, students should also learn AI because AI is growing in many sectors. And though it might not replace jobs, but most jobs will re require some form of knowledge regarding AI. And uh, then meditation, yoga, and sports are very important. And if I became a principal, I'll ensure that each and student participate in physical activities like yoga, sports, and they get proper training for meditation. Like in our school, we do transcendental meditation. There are several types of it. And at last, I want to ensure that we build a community that is based on friendship, emotions, and not just a business, because education can never become a business. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, Maria's Public School. If I were a principal, I could advocate for continuous improvement. I could embrace innovation, encourage professional development, and seek ways to enhance the learning experience. I think an ideal principal is one who ensures that, uh, that expectations, goals, and updates are communicated transparently. And I would like to be one of those kind of uh, principal. Also, I would like to actively listen to concerns uh, provide support and foster a, change, a sense of belonging. This creates a uh, school environment where students feel comfortable expressing themselves. I would also like to go to the uh, junior section of the school and inspire them to be great people, to teach them great values. And all these things uh, are uh, I could do. I could like to do. Are I was inspired by my principal. I, I could, and she's a uh, role model, model for me if I were a principal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dan Bosco. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, if I was the principal, then uh, of course, as we've already talked about the digital newsletter, I think that would be a great combination between uh, technology and creativity. Uh, the first priority for me would be to enforce discipline but at the same time allow students to have their creative space. Uh, I, would I would like to be flexible with current trends so that students see me as someone they should not fear but as someone they can always uh, approach for support and guidance. Uh, and um, I would also vouch for a free and friendly environment so that students are able to put forward their ideas and I would and I would uh, make sure to engage students in the decision making process because at the end of the day we are taking we as a school management will be taking decisions uh, that will ultimately have consequences for students um, that, that's all now thank you thank you St. Mary's School you are the principal of the school now. So, uh, being a principal is not an easy job. And being the principal of St. Mary's High Secondary School is a more difficult job, I believe, because the students in St. Mary's are not the same. Everyone is not the same. Some students are good, who can uh, trust, uh, who can, who, uh, th the students who principal can't, trust upon but there are some students who are so notorious that we cannot trust upon them so as as to as a student and uh, if i believe that i'm a principal of saint mary school the first thing that i do is to make the students come out because there are some introvert students who do not feel like coming out of their tortoise shell they want to stay in the class sit in the last benches and just pass the day. They want to come to school, go back home, come to school, go back home. They don't want to explore the horizons that life provides. The second thing that I want, I would like to do is, uh, as my friends from Maharshi Vidya Mandir has pointed out, that AI cannot replace a human being. So, uh, as the principal, if I were to believe that I am the principal of St. Mary's, I would ensure that students are not glued to their mobile phones all the time because sometimes we lie, even I do that, we lie to our parents that 
we are learning from the mobiles, but we are playing video games or watching videos, which just wastes our time. Uh, and I would also like to be not to be an authoritative figure who is imposing rules and regulations, but someone whom we can look up to. At last, like our mentor and ever guide, Don Bosco has pointed out, I'd like to teach students not with blows, but with loving kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, SFS School. You have, I will. you have spoken about your principal. Now you are the principal of the school. Right, right. Uh, I indeed respect my principal because he has truly exceeded my expectations. <laughs> All right, I'll begin. If I were to be a principal, I would like to see there is a very clear notion that European schools are better than Asian schools. That is why I, even I want to go abroad. But what creates this notion? We need to delve deeper into that, right? So, firstly, it's the curriculum design. In Asian schools, commonly, I'm not saying every school, commonly, we basically put emphasis on the academical side, not the broader educational system. We need to consider all the factors before, uh, if I were to be in uh, principal, I'd impose a very broad educational system. Secondly, it would be the involvement of languages, the dying languages, like Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a beautiful language, but it's not taught at school. A very few school practice uh, Sanskrit, like Maharshi Vidya Mandir, they are one of the schools that practice Sanskrit. Even European countries are researching on Sanskrit because it's an ancient language. I'd like to encourage language intro, uh, introduction in schools if I were to be a uh, principal. Uh, thirdly, the exposure. The exposure to various uh, activities and you know conferences like this one as such uh, and finally I'd like to uh, mention teaching methods teaching methods vary in many regions and that is why we can differentiate between uh, schools from different region and I would not change the teaching method that is being taught in India, but rather strengthen it and empower it in a beautiful way. Thank you for your. Thank you so much. <laughs> now the next question: Suppose, suppose the management decides to bring in a new principal, and whom you would like to consider as an ideal principal. I would like each one of you or your team to describe, give description of the qualities or the traits or the attitudes or the values that you associate with an ideal principle. Maria's Public School, can you start? I believe an ideal principal should be able to handle any sudden occurrences effectively. For example, the COVID situation, the transformation from the offline learning experience to the virtual learning platform specifically for all the students as well as the educators. Uh, our principal took on this challenge meticulously and ensured that this anomaly did not hamper the educational growth. Uh, moreover, I believe that an idle principal must believe in learning beyond the classroom and 
Uh, they must organize and encourage students to collaborate on community projects and engage in service learning that help in broadening our understanding and skills. Moreover, an ideal principal must understand the problems faced by the students and be with it. By approaching the student issues with sensitivity and responsiveness, a principal can effectively navigate and resolve problems tactfully. Moreover, I believe that an ideal principal must follow the latest educational guidelines and changes, such as the NEP 2020. They must adapt to the changing educational landscape and implement innovative solutions to meet the evolving needs of the students and the community. Now I hand over to my friend Vita. Thank you. I would like to continue what my friend Eric was saying. An ideal principal is one who understands the problem of teachers and other school staffs and they take necessary steps to build a strong and positive environment inside the school premises. An ideal principal is confident enough uh, to understand the problems or changes a student might be going through. Most importantly, an ideal principal is the leader who leads not only the students but also the ethos of the school towards progress. Hence, an ideal principal is not only one authority for administration but also the one who empowers and molds the future generation. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Maharishi Vidya Mandir. An ideal principal. That's a like very broad topic to be accurately described, but I will try my best. I would like my ideal principal. You can point out, you know, highlight any qualities, any traits, any attitudes yes. or values that you would like to associate with the ideal principal. Yes. Any one of them. I would like my ideal principal to be one with an empathy and one who is inclined towards flexible systems. But nowadays our education system has become a very rigid system you have to study some things go home the questions will be based on that but we are not learning beyond that and the real world focuses on that so my ideal principle would be one who not only focuses on the things which are part of the curriculum but who is also flexible to the events that are happening in real life like the recent Chandrayaan 2 event, Chandrayaan 3 event that happened, which was very great for our India, or the recent event in Asian Olymp Asian Games, where our Indian sports person won so many medals. I would like my ideal principal to also encourage and inculcate those values and those lessons which you can learn from such great personalities into our curriculum, which we will study as students. I also want my principal to have great communication skills so that he can convey the ideas which he might have, his visionary ideas, to us so that we understand what our principal, sir or ma'am, demands from us or wants from us and how we can perform on such ideals and on those notions. Okay. To continue further, I would like to ask my friend Regan. So I would like my principal to have a visionary thinking like in Marias in I guess 2015 only they have set up a MUN community. So MUN is very important because it helps leadership skills, speaking skills, public speaking skills. So such kinds of vision, such kinds of ideas if a principal has then the students will surely be benefited. And secondly, organization skills are very important. The better organization skills a principal will have, the more opportunities, the more chances a student will get. And uh, lastly, I would like my principal. I would like my principal to have an openness to new ideas. And she or he, if they are a learner, if they are a continuous learner, then it's very good because every time there is something new happening around us and the more our principal will have an idea have a knowledge about us it will indirectly or directly benefit the students us thank you thank you any one of the points okay yes ma'am so the point i would like to talk about is uh, there should be maximized uh, participation from the principal as per my uh, view that we should not find him always in, in the office or her in the office that we go and we'll find her in the office sometimes we may find him in the football ground 
Sometimes may we find her that she's singing in the auditorium with us. So such maximized participation should be there in our day-to-day -day life activity so that we can see the involvement of the principal in our daily life. So that was my Thank point. you. St. Mary's. When I believe that the influence of a principal can never be erased, for me, my ideal principal is someone who is approachable, supportive, and who motivates us. A principal should be able to foster a positive environment where students can go and express themselves and seek guidance. A principal should be able to motivate the students to become something great in life. I believe that a principal should be open to all feedbacks and should include students in decision-making skills as well. That is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. SFA School. Good evening, ma'am. So uh, for me, like uh, the strategies which an ideal principal actually should foster is like uh, first I would like to prioritize on the uh, digital efficiency which should really be incorporated because as we are moving on with this artificial intelligence and maybe a few decades later we'll really have this in our like uh, in our curriculum it's, uh, in itself so it's better to go for this integrated curriculum uh, besides being the traditional methods as well because as the my uh, friends they mentioned that no one can replace the robots as well because the emotions the etiquette through which a teacher inculcates an individual cannot be compared to robotics of course because they are just programmed in that particular way the way we program actually so it's better to go with that integrated curriculum taking the traditional methods as well and also I would like to uh, say that uh, an ideal principal should also have that administrative skills uh, to lead the teaching faculty as well as the students and um, uh, as well as the students and also uh, kind of apprehensive he or she should be a person full of apprehension as well as a motivator um, and, and a provider of encouragement as well and certain committees can also be established regarding these issues of uh, anxiety, depression and other which the students nowadays are facing. So all in all I would say um, technology is required as well as traditional ways should also be focused. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now the children have spoken so much about uh, principle, about the qualities, about the attitudes, about the values and about some, you know, being tech savvy, about the emerging technologies. Now we flip the session to you all. We want to know your perspective, your viewpoints, or you can ask any questions to our panelists here. Would you like to ask questions to our panelists? Or you can share your opinions too. To students, I'm asking. Um, these days after this pandemic, due to the media, students are forming their own small, small groups. And many of the schools, at least around my area, I'm coming from Kajiranga, Bukaghat, uh, schools they form and they start fighting among themselves uh, both boys and girls and they fight outside in a group and it comes to the school that fight so what do you suggest or how it happens to students I'm asking which team would like to answer these are all student issues, yes? Yes, SFS school would like to answer your question, sir. Thank you for your question. I'd like to point out that this kind of issues happen due to the lack of parental collaboration. When you can collaborate, when you can encourage parents to 
engage with this uh, with the school and with the students efficiently these issues will be uh, almost unseen thank you sir so both parents and the school community need to collaborate to solve certain issues related to students next question from the Here audience so thank you dear students you had enlightened us more than i think the other sessions that we had today from my experience i'd like to uh, put forward some of the difficult situation that we are in sometimes and i think that you can answer better in continuation with that line what is said father sometimes we also come across that students even in the schools they behave like adults you no know? they look for one to one relationship and this is a growing trend we don't understand how it happens at this moment that they would like to carry that relationship even in the classrooms and even in the school but the moment they see the principal or the teachers they behave as though everything is normal how do you respond to this yes don bosco school so, uh, thank you for your question sir so what you have just described is a characteristic of adolescence and uh, we really can't do anything much about how students feel or how they want to go about their personal lives but about uh, those relationships obstructing their school life i think we can uh, definitely go for uh, we can definitely uh, go for counseling as a um, alternative we can or not only counseling but we can uh, incorporate moral education and uh, and and we can teach students uh, the delicate balance between uh, studies and relationships as uh, you have mentioned sir thank you next question Congratulations. Congratulations to the students, those who are present here, um, well presented, well spoken, given us some time to think of how we have to be as a principals, a friendly nature with the students, some of you have touched our hearts, some of you have well prepared answer, some of you gave very spontaneously. thank you for that i have two questions the first question to the msfs school student here you said in your point when you become a principal you will keep the mobile sabi even if it is 100 years he will never become a principal okay because today's generation they demand as soon as they are born they are with the mobile that's one thing then second point i want to ask you you were um talking about designing the curriculum yeah however we it may be connected to even the students sitting there you were talking about we want our principals to take us beyond the classroom or the syllabus today what is the most tough task we face in the school is more than mending you adjusting within you nurturing you and putting in the right line answering the parents demand is the biggest one you are expressing your view how many of you really talk to your parents what my principal is doing is right when they come and counter attack the principal in the school because most of the parents they only highlight about completion of the syllabus they don't want any extra curricular activities it's a waste of time are you getting so how many of you really talk to your parents about the teacher who is teaching you or the principal who is really giving the time energy and spending that's my first question to the team uh, i want you to i would just personally want to know how many of you really talk to your parents because if a parent is coming and asking in the office it's based on your narration your verbal communication to the parents am i clear in my how question how many of you uh, how many of to your parents about their school principal what your principal is doing in the school 
how hard working he is and he's doing everything for your improvement, upgradation of education, okay? Or what your teachers are doing in the class? All of them wants to reply. Starting with SFS. They are representing the school, definitely they all will be the best one, that's why you all are sitting here. As the students representative of your peers or the colleagues or the companions, I am asking. Sir, your opinion again arises another question. <laughs> that do principal only appoint the brilliant students? No. Right. A ideal principal would give opportunity to every student so that they can get exposed to the entire world. All right, I'll uh, start answering your question, sir. Uh, I think it depends on the maturity of the student. It differs with age. Well, uh, I am 14 and I think uh, everyone here might be around uh, 15 or 16 or 14, right? So, uh, yeah, we are teenagers, we have, we are in the period of uh, puberty and adolescence, we are knowing new things. So, of course, uh, we are excited to share the experiences of our uh, learning through our school. That's my answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, who would like to answer? Maharishi Vidya Vandir. Sir, sir, first of all, sir, I am a backbencher. So all my life, I have spent my most of my school time outside of the class, then in the class. <laughs> but still, our principal, she values it. And not only our, I guess in every school, the principal values talent more than... Uh, your mere academics and sir it and in recent times in uh, software companies or in uh, IT industry sir most of the software engineers sir they don't have uh, degrees they are skilled in programming so I guess they are talented but they are not good in academics so just like that in our schools also sir the students were standing in the back were sitting in the back benches or were standing outside of the class or who have got punishment, they might have talent. And at present times, things are really changing because principals of schools, teachers of schools, they are understanding that extra co-curricular activities are becoming more important. And not only students or teachers, even slowly the change is coming. We can see it, in, though it's very little, but it's coming among the parents also because parents are appreciating they are giving best of luck, they are giving their best wishes to students, their, their children, when they are getting achievements in different kind of fields, rather than academics. So yes, we can see a change, sir. Thank you. I hope you get the answer. <laughs> yes, Don Bosco School. My parents want me always to sit in the front, but I always was pushed backside because I'm tall enough, also very naughty enough. I also never attended English class in my school days. I always used to bunk. My question, I'm not asking you to answer me here, as you all are the representative, how are you going to talk to your peers? To your so parents. you are the bridge between the teachers or the management or the parents, okay? I'm not asking you answer, as you all representing your school or your student's body here, I'm only asking you the question, take it further to your classroom, your campus, where you play a vital role, building up the relationship between the principal and the management and the parents. I suppose I'm making, I'm not asking you answer. Clear? Yeah. I Thank you. A, I have a question. Yeah, Don Bosco School would like to answer. You know, comment. Uh, as sir uh, asked, like, I would like to respond it in this way that I am a new student in Don Bosco School, Pan Bazar. I am not even from Gohati itself. And nobody knows me actually that what are my capabilities, how far can I go. But despite all these uh, 
uh, I think the miscommunication or the gap that is formed between the school and me. Uh, still, I was allowed to come to and, and participate here because I was uh, encouraged and I was eager to participate in this. So this is first factor. Second thing what Sir uh, addressed is that uh, the communication gap that we have between us and our parents. Now, one thing we all uh, and you people need to understand is that during our adolescence period or our teenage period, it is the mental uh, process, there, there are many mental processes that we, be, we go through and you have all been through it. So you should understand that it is not a one-way communication that we'll have, it is always a two-way communication. And you have to approach first because you have the experience that you have been through that phase and you can understand us better. And is it that, that you, are, are you people giving enough time for, to us are you too busy with a professional life that you have no time to talk to us? I think the problem is the elders are not approaching to talk to us. And if they approach, we will surely talk. And the parents who, uh, among us, the parents who approach and talk to us, we are o always open to talk to them. It is the case in, in the case of parents also and for the teachers and, and the, as well as the principal. So that was my point. Thank you. So they require a lot of openness and transparency, you know, so that there is a two-way uh, communication, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sir. Sir has a question. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. I nearly forgot the question now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you remember. <laughs> I would, now I would try to remember. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the boys and girls, you're doing a very wonderful uh, job. I think uh, we feel that you would have a good career one day in your life. And you're very wonderful. And the moderator as well. My question is, uh, uh, if you're asked to choose, if you're asked to choose a male and female principal, who do you choose? Why? <laughs> I like to, I like I, the, the, my question is for the students. That's a very highly competitive question. <laughs> <laughs> I would repeat the question again, boys and girls. <laughs> I, would, I would repeat the questions again. If you are asked to choose between a male and female principal, who do you choose? Why? I'd like to have the answer from your heart, not a diplomatic or political correct answer. <laughs> So that is That's very interesting. Who to start with? Okay, we start with SFS school. Sir, I'd like to know the context behind your question. <laughs> <laughs> the context depends on how you take the messages. Oh my God. Diplomatic enough. So, <laughs> we usually we have male principals, we have female principals in this in this hall. But what we want is we want your honesty. The human being would always give the honest feedback. We would not like to polish people. We like to give your heart. So we like to hear from you, all of you, the heart. What something that is in your heart, not from in your head. So we like to have the answer from your heart, Absolutely. not only from your head. I can't see male and female here though. I can just see humans. I can just see humans here. We judge, we don't judge. We need an ideal principle, not an ideal gender here. Right? I hope that answers your question, Father. Thanks. I think she's very diplomatic. <laughs> so we ask another team, Maharishi Vidya Mandir. Sir, actually, I fear my mother more than my father. So definitely, it's a male principal only. I would choose. <laughs> and uh, in last 12 years, I have enough of a female principal. <laughs> she has given me enough. Oh no! Years. So I guess a male principal will be friendly with me. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Yes, Don Bosco. Interesting answers coming in. 
Ma'am, to counter his opinion, I would definitely go for a female uh, principal. Uh, Ma'am, uh, both in life and also in school, I have seen that uh, as a as a female myself, I can connect better with uh, females because our experiences, although they differ in some contexts, at the end of the day, they are the same. Also, um, I feel that men have a tendency to deal with an, to deal with things with an iron hand, while women tend to be more empathetic <laughs> and uh, would uh, and would go through negotiation and discussion before imposing their own will. So I would definitely go for a female. Principal. Female. Okay. Next, Maria's Public School. Quick answer. Quick answer. Uh, sir, I would also like to go with a female principal. Wow. Empowering women. The reason being uh, that uh, since my childhood, I have seen that women plays a mother figure in, school, in a school compound. They connect emotionally with the students. I think they are more calm and they can take better decision than us uh, male. Thank you. Let's give chance to St. Mary's. <laughs> so I have a counter question. If you were given a choice, who would you choose? A male or a female student? It's a counter question to you, sir. <laughs> I have to think over. <laughs> so, so, for our students, it is the qualities of the principal that matters, not the gender. Thank you so much. So, I think with this happy note, we end this session on panel discussion. Thank you, children, for enriching and enlightening our minds. Thank you so much. Thank you, audience, for the wonderful questions. Thank you. So at the end of this beautiful session, panel discussions on the topic, my idol principal, I'm sure all the principals will be thinking what to do next when we go back to our place. Uh, in the first place, I. We thank the, uh, our moderator, Ms. Ma'am Yasmin Hussain, and all the students from SFS, Maria Public School, St. Mary's, Don Bosco, and Maharishi for sparing your time, coming over here, sharing your ideas with us, and enlightening us with your um, opinions and also with your experiences and what to expect from us. Thank you. And to propose a Word of thanks. I now uh, call upon Father Nigel Jones to come over here and say a few words. Actually, we came for this conference to get rid of the teachers and students. But we find that uh, the second day we have a couple of students again and we have the same thing happening in the school. Anyway, uh, I really like the kind of interaction we had this afternoon. Thank you, uh, Ms. Yasmin Hussain, for uh, navigating the wonderful panel session. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was, uh, my dear students, well presented and well spoken, and you are prepared so well. And uh, very seldom we hear, about, we hear from the students how we should behave or how we should be in our school, in our administration. And uh, I could gather from this wonderful session, it's all about we must be approachable. As he rightly pointed out, we must be in the ground, we must be in the library, we must be wherever we can. We should be able to uh, come out from our uh, principal chamber and we should be available and approachable. The second one is to reduce the uh, gap between the students and hierarchy. We should get them into the uh, table and uh, discuss the problems and uh, get them also part of our decision making. And uh, we, also, we also should know that there is learning happens among the peer group. So we should be able to get them and uh, listen from them. And also uh, in this 21st century we should be able to give them digital uh, citizenship and enable them. And finally help them to be, uh, help them to broaden their horizon of uh, educating education of mind. Thank you very much and I appreciate the wonderful work, wonderful presentation you all had representing the schools in Guwahati. Thank you ma'am and thank you dear students. Thank you. Thank you Father Nijo Jos. Now I call upon Father Clitor Sebastian, the director of DBI.
to come here and give away the certificate and a token of uh, love and appreciation for our students who have uh, worked hard and coming over here sharing their ideas with us. So we now, I will call upon the name and you please stand and get our token of appreciation from the Institute. Um, Migranav Kaushit Sarma from Maharishi Vidya Mandar Senior Secondary School and Parto Protim Roy. Adi Sinha and Umilita Patak from San Francis de Sales, Narangi, Gohati. Jayal, uh, Jashila Sharma and Ayanika Goswami from St. Mary's High Secondary School, Gohati. Divyanshi Gogoi and Dishlat Ahmed Talukdar from Don Bosco School, Pambazar. Then we have Magdalol Islam and Erika Bordoloi from Maria Public School, Gohati. Maria Public School, Migdalul is Islam and Erika Bordoloi. Thank you, students, and thank you, Father. We would also like to thank Ma'am. Yasmin Hussein for sparing her time and coming over here to be with us this event, this afternoon. Thank you, ma'am. Now we will break off for tea. Let us uh, we will go for tea, and after that, the next session will be. At Good evening, all of you. We are going to have the last session for the day. Let me introduce the resource persons for this evening's. Uh, session, Dr. Sumit Jarat IAS. I am honored to introduce our distinguished guest, Dr. Sumit Jarat, who is a former civil servant. Dr. Jarat has a remarkable career spanning over 30 years, during which he has served in various economic and infrastructure ministries in the state and the central government. He has worked in the ministries of steel, power, economic affairs, heavy industries and public enterprises and commerce where he has contributed to the formulation and implementation of policies and programs related to these sectors. He has also served as the financial advisor in the Ministry of External Affairs where he has handled the financial aspects of Indian, India's foreign relations and diplomacy. He has retired as the Secretary of the Department of Official Language, where he has promoted the use and development of Hindi and the other Indian languages in the government and public sphere. Dr. Jarad has a PhD in Marketing from the Faculty of Management Studies, University of Delhi, where he has also obtained his MBA degree. He has another MBA degree in Public Service from University of Birmingham, UK. He has an MA in Economics from Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. Dr. Jarad is currently working as the administrative member of the Central Administ Administrative Tribunal in Guwahati, where he adjudicates the services matters, service matters of the central government employees. So, Dr. Jarad, we are indeed very happy that you are here with us this evening. Let us put our hands together and welcome Dr. Jarath as our DBI team. Thank you very much. 
can uh, manipulate this now. Good evening, uh, friends. I know this is not the best time for me to stand up and lecture at the fag end of the day uh, when you are fatigued, tired, and then looking for the main function today in the evening. But nevertheless, I'll try to make my talk as illuminating and as interesting as possible. At the very outset, let me give my heartiest congratulations and felicitations to the members and the family of the Don Bosco Institution on their 19th Foundation Day. And it is indeed my profound privilege and real pleasure to be here addressing this very distinguished and august gathering of principals from all over the Northeastern states and also our friends from Bhutan, which you know is the most friendly country in the Sark region. We now talk of not Sark, but BBIN, since I was a part of the MEA. B for Bhutan, B for Bangladesh, and I for India, and then for Nepal. Now my task has been to give you some fine points on the role of the principal and the right set of leadership competencies in the context of the new education policy, NEP. Now, before I start, I just want to tell you, you know more than me, since you are all education administrators, that in the new education policy, the focus is on the holistic and all-round development of the pupil, of the student. And you give the flexibility to the child, not to just have the silos of just science or arts or commerce, but a hybrid eclectic model where he can even take philosophy with physics and history with chemistry and the focus has to be on technology and teamwork and since it is ICT skills it is teamwork we need to build the right set of leadership competencies to develop a good curriculum and to deliver because as we were discussing with Father Thomas, delivery is most important. How do you drill those concepts in the minds of the children? So, I'll start off, before I talk of competencies and we talk of the leadership theories and models, we first talk of the great man theory, the trait, the quality theory of leadership. As you know, some are born great, some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them. So who are born great? You are from Bhutan, the king of Bhutan. He has two princes. They are born great with the golden spoon in their mouth. In our politics, we have Rahul Baba, Rahul Gandhi, born great. Then there are some guys who achieve greatness. Like our Prime Minister Modi, your Prime Minister. And some have greatness thrust upon them. Like I know Rajiv Gandhi was a very reluctant Prime Minister. Indira Gandhi wanted Sanjay Gandhi to be the Prime Minister but he died in a air crash and Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister by accident. Dr. Manmohan Singh, since he was a Rajya Sabha MP from Assam and his local MP area fund has been used generously in the Don Bosco Institute, was also an accidental Prime Minister where greatness was thrust upon him. So when you talk of the great man theory, the trait theory of leadership, the qualities. Let me remind you from our history. We had the three great kings in India, Akbar, Ashoka, and then later on Alexander, who came from Macedonia. Now why do we remember them? We remember them because it was Alexander the Great. It was Ashoka the Great. It was Akbar the Great. So you have to be principal the Great, like we are sitting here in Don Bosco. We have Father Thomas. Father Thomas is the great, not the good. So all remember him. And whenever he comes here, I find there are smiles all over, whether it is teachers or pupils. We have Father Cletus now. 
Father Cletus also is the great principal, not the good. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are the principals and if you have to make a mark, an impact in your school, in your community, you have to be principal the great, not principal the good. Okay, I think PPT has gone off. Mr. Sarma? Hmm? Oh, it's gone to sleep mode. Well, I don't blame because in Assam, all are sleeping. All are dormant. I don't know whether you know, we are called the land of Lahe Lahe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So please be here only. One of you be here. In fact, I am now a High Court judge, administrative member. So there is a Latin phraseology that if you are vigilant, then you are supposed to get your legal rights. If you are sleeping and dormant over your rights, you have no right to law. Vigilantibus, non-dormantibus, jura subvenient. In fact, I am a student of law now, so law borrows a lot from Latin. Let me start because I'll keep it simple and straightforward. I'll start with the D's. The trait theory of leadership, I'll start with the D's. It's not come. That's why Mr. Sarma, I'm a I'm an IS officer and uh, that's why I did not sit in the principal's room, director's room, I came first here. I put my boots on the ground because I knew this was my Karam Bhumi. Yeah, please be here only. You are the troubleshooter. So friends, I have deliberately thought I'll start with the D's. And don't worry, you can take some notes if you like and some pictures, but this is available and I'll request Father Cletus and Mr. Professor Sarma to share a copy of this to all. Our friends, Father Thomas, have come from the land of D. Any, any person here? What do you mean by the land of D? D, the dragon. Bhutan is the land of the thunder dragon. So I thought to our Bhutanese friends, I'll focus on the Ds first. The D set of leadership qualities. Now it's my experience, friends, that the most important D is the domain knowledge. If I'm a high court judge now, I'm not a LLB, but I've got vast administrative experience. If I don't understand administrative law and constitutional law, I cannot write judicious and well-reasoned judgments. So I'm burning the midnight oil to study administrative and constitutional law. When I was principal secretary, Energy Government of Assam, Father Thomas knows, we helped in giving the electricity connection here. I'm an economist manager by training, not a power electrical engineer. But I brushed up my physics, started with Ohm's law, Faraday's law, and the basics of thermodynamics. So as a principal, a leader is more than a teacher, uh, a, a leader is more than a manager, a principal is more than a teacher. And you're all principals here, isn't it? So you are, you are the role model for all the teachers and the pupils. Everyone's looking at you. So you must have, and, and this is a knowledge age, it's an information age. Where now in the, the new education policy, our pupils will be taught in the local language, say in Assam, Assamese, in Odisha, Odia. So you have to know the local language and using more and more of technology in the pedagogy, in the teaching methodology. So you must have some basic ICT skills. So I'll start with domain knowledge. Diligence, hard work. Albert Einstein famously said, intelligence may fail you, diligence shall never fail you. And if you ask any of the students who cracked the IIT exam, the IM exam, they said we were not born intelligent. We became intelligent by our diligence, by our devotion, by our dedication, by our determination. So first is domain knowledge in a knowledge economy and information age, then is diligence. Third is dominance the drive and the desire to lead. If you are dormant, if you are not confident, you'll never be a good leader, never be a good principal. So the Ds are very important. And besides that, you need 
confidence and you need eloquence but i'll come to that later yeah these are the c's after the d are the c's and in the c i would rate competence as number 1 damn good at getting the results confidence communication character or compass because ethical leadership is very important and then the compassion the empathy but this d's and c's are just the threshold qualities and traits you have seen the aeroplane how does it take off it first acquires a critical minimum speed or like a rocket when it goes to space it needs to acquire the escape velocity so you need the take off traits what are those take off traits going to refer to the jack welch model of four e's jack welch was the former ceo of general electric and he said that even if you have the d's and the c's but if you don't have the e's then you're good for nothing what are these e's first energy positive go go energy you should be like ever ready batteries okay ever ready give me red energize you have to transmit your fire in the belly and ignite the spark in your teachers and in your pupils edge the ability to take tough decisions life and death decisions and execution because the proof of the pudding is in the eating you don't as a principal just have to talk the walk you have to walk the talk and i had gone to insiat which is the best business school in europe set up by a french professor from harvard who said he'll make the best harvard business school outside harvard in europe he is george dorio when you enter the insiat business school you have his bust and down is written without action the world without action the world would just be an idea without action the world would still be an idea so we have to come out of the realm of ideas and make action then the level 5 leadership as i said father thomas is remembered father cletus is remembered because they are not just good they are great so there is a very famous management thinker jim collins who wrote two books from good to great and built to last he said that all good leaders all good principals should become the level 5 executive not level 1 you may be a highly capable individual but you have to go beyond that level 5 executive with a deep you know personal will and extreme personal humility daniel goldman who talks of eq emotional quotient not just high iq but emotional quotient and in a land of lahe lahe you must also have a very high pq and oq what is pq passion passion quotient and oq obsession quotient to get your results so unless you have what we call in hindi the jasba and the janoon you cannot translate your thoughts and ideas into action now after traits are the skills and robert katz you know he wrote this seminal article the skills of an effective administrator you are all educational administrators he said we require three skills technical skills human skills conceptual skills technical skills are required to handle things okay say like books in the library human skills your interpersonal relations how you deal with your teachers and pupils and then conceptual skills your ideas to generate new ideas so he said at the top of the pyramid you require more of conceptual skills and at the bottom of the pyramid you require more of technical skills but i feel now that in this current age information age knowledge economy it's a constant flux we require technical skills at the highest level also as principals you can't say that you know all my ict and my computer will be done by my assistant no you must be able to make a ppt you must be able to send emails you must be able to work on excel sheet so technical skills are as important at the highest level as they are at the lowest level 
Now come to competencies. I didn't come to competencies straight because I thought I'll develop the paradigm gradually, the model gradually. After talking of qualities and traits, skills, we are coming to competencies because competencies are knowledge, skills, values, and attitude. And Father Thomas, I remember once told me that your altitude in life depends upon your attitude. Bhutan, Thimpu, you're at a height of 6,000 feet. What's the height in Thimpu? 7,000 or 6,000? Shillong is 6,000. So in Thimpu, you are sitting on a very high altitude. But if you are a depressive <coughs> mental case, uh, your attitude is negative, pessimistic, then even sitting on Mount Everest won't help. Okay? Have a positive attitude, a constructive attitude, not a cynical, critical attitude. Bengal, I don't know how many people understand Bangla. In Calcutta, they say Cholbena, Hobena. Negative attitude, no. Have a positive, can-do attitude. Be the part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Behaviors. In leadership, we talk of two types of behaviors. Directive behavior and supportive behavior. What is directive behavior? Directive behavior is your task-related behavior. And supportive behavior is your people-oriented behavior. So, I'll use the... Zero five, zero six, zero seven, zero eight, zero nine. Okay. This is the Cartesian plane. Here we have directive behavior. Here we have supportive behavior. Task-oriented style. How much focus you are giving on the task? Accomplishment of the task. What we call performance management. Here is relationship management. So Blake and Mountain, depending on this directive and supportive behavior, gave out five kinds of styles, leadership styles. If it is one, one here, low performance management, low relationship management. It's a very poor style, impoverished style, poor. If it is very high on people oriented style, but low on task, then you are a country club manager, club manager. Okay? Or country club principal. Lot of parties. Okay? Every evening is a party with the teachers. And if you are a very hard taskmaster, 9 1, very high on directive behavior, but very low on interpersonal skills, you are very, very autocratic. You are a hard taskmaster, isn't it? Hard taskmaster principal. Autocratic. In fact, we normally in the leadership styles talk of three styles. Laissez-faire, which is hands-off policy. Autocratic, democratic. Blake and Morton have talked of three. Impoverished style, country club style, hard taskmaster. And in India, we have the mixed economy, middle of the road. So you are five on task and five on people. It's five, five. We call it middle of the road. Averages. And this is the best as per Blake and Mountain. High on task, high on people, 9-9. Nine, nine. What is it called? The team principle style. And Blake and Mountain said that this is the best style. Okay? 
but management public administration education is not physics it's not chemistry where you have the immutable laws balls law charles law newton's law of gravity wherever you go the gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second square so this theory was challenged <coughs> by the situational leadership theorists by the contingency school who said that not every time would the team style be the best it depends on the situation it depends on the contingencies as a principle it depends upon the nature and characteristics of your of your teachers and your students if your students are self starters are very conscientious very committed have both the will and the skill then no need to you know <clears throat> put all the pressure on them just let go so that they get going what we call the delegating style the delegating style will come here because it is low on task and low on people because you have allowed your teachers and your pupils to let go so that they get going so hershey and blanchard they talked of four styles depending on the characteristics of the followers and others so in your in your case in the case of the principal your stakeholders are your teachers your the parents of the students and the students so depending on their characteristics you have to mold your leadership style as they say in management different strokes for different folks different horses for different courses and different drives for different domains like i used to go to bhutan when i was the chief financial officer of mea and they are very fond of suvs sports utility vehicles because for the hilly terrain you need that kind of drive you can't go in a maruti in shillong they they use the maruti 800 but not in thimphu so different rides for different roads different drives for different domains and the case of you different strokes for different folks so can you just rub this please rub this here is the dust just rub this i'll draw the yeah i'll show that depending on the characteristics of your pupils how conscientious they are how committed they are what is their will and their skill we will adopt our leadership style accordingly you followed this so here they said 99 high directive behavior high supportive behavior high task oriented uh, style high people oriented style high performance management high relationship management is the best but no <coughs> i'll draw a simple diagram 2 by 2 matrix here is the skill which is the competence of your pupils and your teachers and here is the will the commitment okay now this could be low this is high this is low this is high now as i was telling you if you are students and even for a moment pause and reflect back we are all mature learners we are all parents we have kids at home as fathers and mothers if we find our children have high will have, have sorry high skill very good in maths and physics and chemistry and english and also the will the commitment they are self starters then you don't have to really coach them give them a free hand so that they flower they blossom and they actualize their potential on their own what we call the delegating style okay the delegating was equal to the imperative style which blake and morton said is not good but this is the best style you let go your teachers and your people so that they blossom they actualize their potential okay and they get going yes if they are low in skill low in competence low in will low in commitment then yes you need coaching style isn't it if our children are not good in physics chemistry maths english we supplement the classroom t 
teaching with tuitions private tuitions they need extra coaching and especially to crack the iit exam a top engineering exam a management exam so same look at the profile of your teachers and your pupils if they are low in skill low in will you have to have a very high directive and a very high supportive behavior you got to have a very high task oriented and a high relationship oriented style what do you call the team style so team style will work here hasan black and mountain and here is impoverished so called impoverished but not really so and there are other two quadrants to fill if it is low on skill but very high on will okay is willing to learn okay or he is very high in skill but very low in commitment okay so you have to sell the concept selling marketing and this is telling because he is low in skill so you have to tell him tell the people so we had blake and mountains five leadership styles hersey and blanchard this is hersey and blanchard situational leadership theory four four styles of coaching delegating telling and selling okay any questions because i've covered qualities skills competencies behaviors styles and i'll look go to the last one practices yeah Yes. In fact, I and Father Thomas, I was telling him that the focus is on leadership. Just go, Lily. Just go. I'm here. Here. You see, the competencies was given by David McClelland, where he talked of human, general, technical, and leadership competencies. But the father of management, I would like to come. Drucker. He said that you require four leadership competencies. First is the willingness to. Why listen? Because God gave us two ears and only one mouth. So as a principal, please keep your mouth shut. First, listen to your pupils and your teachers. I am a judge now. I follow two principles of natural justice: nemo judex in causa sua. Again, Latin, Roman emperors. Don't be a judge in your own cause. Second, audi eltrum partum. The person who decides must hear. As a judge, I have to hear both the parties, and then I pronounce my judgment. Similarly, as a principal, listen. Be a good listener. Listen first, speak last. Then willingness to communicate. I have told you, articulation, eloquence is very important. You may have domain knowledge. you may have a very high iq you can't market yourself in the interview i don't know whether you seen this movie 12th fail or 12th pass civil service aspirant you have to communicate in the interview a willingness not to alibi oneself and a willingness to realize how unimportant one is compared to the task i have already given you hasan blanchards coming to practices practices so my favorite model of practices of leadership is kuzes and posner i was talking to father thomas since you are all going to be the winning principles you got to have the five winning practices of leadership competencies first modeling the way gandhi ji said don't be a hypocrite if you as a principal teach truth and honesty as great virtues of good citizens but you yourself are a liar you are not a role model for your teachers and your students you focus on punctuality you say that you have to come to school at 7:30 in the morning you yourself come strolling leisurely at 9:00 after a hearty breakfast 
in Thimpu. Nobody will believe you. So live. Live the ideals which you are preaching. Set the example. Don't be a hypocrite. Practice what you preach. Challenging the process. Don't be contented that this is the best way. No. The Japanese say there is always a better way. And that's why they say we believe in Hansai, relentless reflection. And Kaizan, continuous improvement. Business process re-engineering. Administrative process re-engineering. Okay? Challenge the process. Inspire a shared vision. In this, let me take you to the visionary theory of leadership of Marshall Shashkin. Inspiring a shared vision means that you have to craft, create a clear, credible and compelling vision which reflects your BHAGs. What are BHAGs? Big, hairy, audacious goals which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. Our friends are from the land of the thunder dragon. They have given the world the concept of GNH. What is GNH, friends? Gross National Happiness. They preach gross national happiness, but if they themselves are depressed and pessimistic, then God save the king and God save the people of Bhutan. You have to craft a clear, credible, compelling vision, communicate the vision to the stakeholders to buy into, that is your, your teachers and your pupils, commit people to the vision and then concretize the vision. I have gone to many organizations, here ONGC, All India, they have those lovely vision statement, mission statement, core values, human resource practices, key result areas, okay, but all on paper, on the wall. Because communication is only 1%, alignment is 99%. You must breathe, you must think, you must, even when you are sleeping, you must dream of your vision and mission. And not just the principle, Okay, if the principal says, I have learned the vision statement by heart, the mission statement by heart, but the teachers and the pupils don't buy into, it's useless. So crafting, communicating, committing and concretizing. That is the essence of inspiring a shared vision. Then, without action, as I said, the world would just be an idea. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, so you have to foster collaboration and build energetic winning teams based on mutual trust, understanding and shared goals. Empower others so that you let go, delegate as I said, delegate so that others get going. And last but not the least, encourage the heart. Recognize the contributions of your teachers and your pupils and celebrate their achievements. When we talk of leadership styles, we also talk of laissez-faire and transactional leadership and transformational leadership. So transactional leadership, who are the transformational leaders? They are the ones who make an impact. So you got to graduate from laissez-faire to transactional to transformational leadership. And let me see whether I have the style of the practices given by Peter Drucker. But let me just leave you with this idea. Peter Drucker uh, talks of three practices of leadership. First is that get the knowledge you need to know, you need to have, which is required to run your school well. Number two, translate that knowledge into action by developing action plans. Take the responsibility for decisions, for communicating those action plans. And then also see that you are a part of the solution not the part of the problem. Look at opportunities, not threats and challenges. Many people with low attitude, just they become cynical and critical. No. Be the part of the solution, not part of the problem. And third practice is that you have to make your organization, your school responsible and accountable. And how do you do that? One, by running productive meetings. 
I am from the government and I have seen that in the government we first waste the hours and then we record the minutes which is useless and we waste we have endless cups of chai no run productive meetings focus meetings some people you know the principal will call for a meeting he will keep on 3 hours 4 hours with no result it's all management by results by outcomes so run productive meetings and second think of we not i very important i'm writing this the what i have written what is this illness cut off i this is the what they become so think we not i he good principal a good leader you know takes the when you are losing he says the fault is mine you have lost the match we have lost the game because of me but when it comes to winning the credit goes to all the team so think of we not i and then if you think we not i then every illness will become wellness and you are the epitome epitome of the school the leader of the school so i also want to leave you with two great ideas and then i want to throw the house for a discussion because i was told to wind up by 6 o'clock that this is the knowledge age and the information economy so as i said in the beginning i started with the d's the most important is the domain knowledge so i want to quote the father of the nation mahatma gandhi who said that live as if you are going to die tomorrow but learn as if you are going to live forever so it's lifelong learning don't think that you become the principal of a school you have arrived in life no it's just the beginning of the journey you have to learn from cradle to grave and from womb to tomb because the paradox of learning is that the more you know of something the more you feel the less you know about it in fact this was the question they asked me in my phd viva that mr jerat now that you are becoming a doctor what was the greatest learning in your journey as a phd scholar and i said that this was my greatest learning sir the paradox of learning that even though i am a phd now in strategic management i feel the more i have learned on strategic management the more i feel the less i know about it it's, it's like going to the river brahmaputra and collecting a bucket of water okay so be a learning individual and there's a very good book steven covey the seven habits of highly effective people i'm sure you some of you must have read that otherwise there's in the library steven covey seven habits of highly effective people and the most important habit is keep sharpening your axe all the time keep sharpening your saw all the time so that will help you to protect yourself from internal vulnerabilities and how do you face the external challenges by being flexible by being adaptable charles darwin said that the species which will survive that species will survive which is the most adaptable not the most intelligent and we have seen the corona times isn't it you have to adapt you have to be adaptable you have to be mentally agile and physically nimble so in the end i can only say that if i may quote a dialogue from bollywood i hope you all understand hindi our friends from bhutan do you like bollywood movies you see i was the secretary of official language the hindi secretary government of india and i said that i salute and i thank the bollywood stars because even if many people don't know hindi they watch the hindi movies three idiots now 12th fail and even these action movies jawan and tiger 3 so our bollywood stars our politicians who speak in hindi in the mass gatherings public meetings they are our biggest ambassadors of hindi so somebody said i think it was a comedian ki ye duniya gol hai the earth is round aur iske beech mein ek bahut bada hole hai there is a very big hole aur bhaiyo aur behno aap principals ka is duniya mein हमारे स्कूल्स के लिए एक बहुत बड़ा रोल है 
So, I'll just uh, take you back. We started with the qualities, the traits, the great man theory. Our role models are sitting here. Father Clement, he's here. He's Father Clement, Father Thomas. I just now spoke to Father uh, Johnson in Difu. We still remember. They are our iconic principles and directors of Don Bosco. Because Father Thomas is not just Father Thomas the Good. He is Father Thomas the Great. Father Clement is not just Father Clement the Good. Father Clement is the Great. And Father Johnson is not just Father Johnson the Good. Father Johnson the Great. So you all here, sitting in this distinguished August gathering, when you go back, I hope and pray that you all become principals the Great. Become the real role models for our students, our teachers, our local communities, our parents. Starting with the quality theory of leadership, you are from the land of the thunder dragon, the D model, domain knowledge, diligence, dominance, drive, desire to lead, the C's, the competence, the commitment, the confidence, the compass, the compassion, and then the changing course, adaptability. And not just the D and the C, but also the E. Energy, energize, edge, execute. And then go on to the styles of leadership, autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire, transactional, transformational, the impoverished style, the country club style, the hard taskmaster style, the middle of the road style, the team style. And in terms of Hersey and Blanchard, also delegating, coaching, telling, selling. I've given you, you know, a plethora, a repertory. So depending on the characteristics of your pupils and your teachers, you mold your leadership, leadership style accordingly. Different strokes for different folks, different rides for different roads, and then the practices. The competencies are here, the willingness to listen first. Two years God has given, listen more and speak the last. And the five winning practices, modeling the way, challenging the process, inspiring a shared vision, enabling others to act and encouraging the heart. These are very inspiring. Okay. So with these words, I finish my talk and I now invite any questions. Thank you. Jai Ayakom, Jai Hind. I finished 15 minutes earlier. Stick to the time. Because I also believe in zero hypocrisy. Modeling the way. As a speaker, I have to model the way. Because Father Thomas said that you are going to start your next session at 6.15, 6.30. Where my batchmate is coming, Rajiv Bora, retired chairman of Assam Public Service Commission. So I invite the first question from our Bhutanese friends. The land of the dragon. <coughs> and the land of the gross national happiness. I hope you are happy with this lecture and not dismayed and not disappointed. Huh? I can see the smile on your faces. Uh, thank you for the great uh, presentation. We are highly, uh, you made us very insightful with your insights. So thank you very much for this. Uh, the question that uh, I have and yeah. I think maybe many of the, the educations and the leaders would have is yeah. how can we as a leader balance between the spiritual sp the ethical leader and the 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 spiritual leader when you look into if I'll, I will just create a scenario here yes yes you come from the very deeply religious Buddhist country uh, yes. so I, I'll just create a scenario here mm. sometimes we come across children or students who need our speech, uh, we who need our immediate help, uh, the very urgent help. Yes. And that is something the uh, that we need that spiritual light, spirituality need to be there yes. as a leader. But sometimes the ethicality does not allow to be spiritual. So that is the biggest concern between how can we align balance between the spiritual leader and the ethical leader, no. the spiritualism and the, the, the ethicality. So I, which one do we actually focus more? If I, if I understand you correctly, and there are others since you're all mature learners here, I think if you have respect for spiritualism, then automatically you're also 
having respect for ethos and ethics isn't it because every religion teaches love togetherness compassion isn't it ethical if you are a spiritual leader and you're ethical leader you're on the same side you're not on the opposite sides uh, if i say autocratic leader democratic leader but they're on the opposite sides the challenges that we actually come across and experience is uh, the ethically we are not supposed to do we may have to follow the laws rules and regulations of the school ethically uh, but speech, no. spiritually spiritually sometimes we need to also see the emotions of the people no i i, I didn't follow uh, my so friend so now here what, i don't what, follow because if you are respecting the law of the land if you are respecting the customs and the practices of the civil society then you're both ethical and spiritual but if i don't see any antithesis father thomas is here he is also a leadership guru do you find any conflict between a spiritual leader and ethical leader so we like we like to have some insights there you know, i think how you actually experience these leadership experiences when we actually come across issues that we actually need to tackle father thomas would you like to give any insights because i am totally non plus i think in my uh, experience and uh, whatever insights and reflections i have had if you respect the ethics if you respect the law of the land if you respect the customs of the society you are also paying obeisance to spiritualism like we have we are of course a secular country we have different religions we don't have any state religion but the private citizens as per the constitution are free to practice their own faiths so like in don bosco this is a missionary school christianity is encouraged here i come from st stephen's college where i did my economics honors i am a hindu but i studied in st stephen's college we had our little church so i used to sit in the church sometime but i don't practice christianity i like so, to, i like to hear from the <coughs> fathers actually yeah <laughs> from father thomas the great <laughs> i too have not been able to understand the conflict between <coughs> ethics and spirituality do you experience this in real day life it is like this we have i have come ac- i have come across an experience saying yeah. that you know there is a girl student who actually let me open up uh, uh there there was a girl student who was failed by half the half mark and now this girl went home and then the, the the parent wanted her to get married at the when she was grade 6 and she was crying and coming back to my office saying that principal this is the scenario can you help me to get it uh, get a boarding school so that i can study but boarding school starts only from the grade from grade 7 and she was only grade 6 that time she was grade 6 and she was failed by half mark point five now if i do not help her she is going to be forcefully married by her parents if i if i help her my ethicality my duty as a principal as a leader in the school you are actually going beyond the rules and regulations where you are not supposed to add any marks so that is the scenario and now as a father as as a leader how can you solve this problem so that is between how can you balance this between these two scenarios <laughs> thank you can you mic is not working you can come here come here father thomas come here. yeah yeah you want to speak no no you can clarify i also don't understand yeah i think now i could better understand this is truly a dilemma ethical dilemma ethical dilemma but fortunately people like us in our institutions we won't have any issue whatsoever we will give not only half mark maybe even 10 marks 
because i think we spoke about encouraging the heart a leader must be able to encourage and i think if we cannot have that heart for this little girl who wants to continue study and we uh, dub her as a failure in class 6 i i believe it is a crime that we are committing to humanity in fact that's why now for example in india there are no failures practically up to class 10 why do we keep children failed i think we should be more understanding this should definitely i think goes against the spirit of the gross happiness understanding we are promoting happiness and we cannot for this off mark i feel i, I don't think i we can ever fail uh, I, i have got so many examples in my own life when we have allowed children to progress on assurance that they will work harder the next year or they may have to appear for a, another examination but i think we should not dump them as failures in life personally so i understand that you seem to have a problem here i don't think the principals in india would have that issue especially the fathers and sisters will have no issue whatsoever it's up to them to allow the grace marks in order to be promoted yeah the thing is all yeah hello good evening good evening uh, fathers thank you for your giving opportunity to me to when i was in uh, uh, a university student in last uh, final year paper i studied a uh, four type of leadership management the among the four types i studied uh, authoritative leadership democratic leadership uh, parasitic leadership and a decentralized decentralized type of leadership yeah. and among those autocratic who can hold their power and never go, uh, give a chance to grow up down uh, below him yes and uh, democratic leadership who have uh, their policies and politically they want to grow themselves mm. and uh uh then parasitic leadership who have who will be dealing with the people down people as if like a down as if like when they deal a uh, uh, higher people they will li- uh, deal with as if para parasitic they, yeah parasitic like a host and a parasite yes both they are in uh, so what is what is your question uh which one is which leadership is the base okay good please sit down thank you i told you that please sit down i let me explain because i said that as per the hersey and blanchard's model the situational leadership theory the contingency theory of leadership it all depends on the situation if like there is a fire in the school you are the principal then you require an autocratic style you have to vacate everyone you have to be a hard task master please vacate you you can't be democratic but if it comes to a uh, innocuous decision like where do you want to go for a picnic then you take the choices of the students isn't it in pedagogy in teaching methodology i told you look at your skill and will your competence and commitment of your pupils if you find your students pupils are competent and committed have the skill and the will then you don't have to work too much on them don't be a hard task master let them blossom on their own give them freedom academic freedom autonomy they will actualize their potential so delegate but if your pupils are lacking in skill that is competence and lacking in will in commitment then you have to work walk the extra mile work the extra hour coaching you have to coach them not delegate 
So different strokes for different folks. Please write this down. We teach this in the business schools. Different strokes for different folks. And you are very fond of vehicles in Bhutan, SUVs. So different rides for different roads. Different drives for different domains. Do you have horse racing in Bhutan? No. Otherwise different horses for different courses. Different strokes for different folks. No leadership style is the best. Blake and Mountain said that, I drew that simple Cartesian plane diagram, X axis, Y axis, the 9-9. Nine -nine. High on task performance management, high on people, relationship management. 9-9 nine -nine is the best, team style. No, it is not always the best. Sometimes, as I said, if your pupils are both competent and committed, have high skill and will, then the impoverished style, low on task, low on people is the best. So this is not science, it's not physics and chemistry. It is public administration. It is pedagogy, it's education. So I just want to demonstrate how uh, Mr. Subit Jarath practiced this time. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll stand there. In the context of this institution, two things happened, or rather on two different occasions. The first was, it was, I was getting it, imp it was getting impossible to get the permission for this. Electricity. Now, before the electricity, there was one other, it was impossible to get permission for the municipality for um, the GMC plan, yeah. GMC approval. Mr. Subit had then become the administrator of the, GMDA. Yeah, I was the Guwahati Municipal Commissioner and then the administrator. Yes. And mm. you know what was the reason? Now, this is a bit of ethical dilemma again. The, the problem was one of the boys did not get admission in Don Bosco. So the file disappeared from the GMC office. I went to Mr. Jarad and said, you know, I have a serious problem. And if, I'm frustrated. We are trying to build up an institution and we have been trying our best to set it up as soon as possible. We are not getting the permission. He asked me where it is. He came over. I don't know whether you recall I this. I recall, I you recall. came over here to this land and I'm recalling this on this foundation day. Yes. We had a small hut, which probably none of you have ever seen. A small little hut near that second gate with a wooden kind of floor. And in case she's here, you will know that what it is. He came inside there. By then, we had managed to get a telephone installed. There was no telephone, no electricity, no water, no nothing in this place. There was a telephone, thanks to another guy who gave us a telephone. So I spoke to Mr. Jarad. You know what he did? He practiced what is called the HT style. Total, nine. Not nine, nine that day. Nine, one. One, one nine. One nine. He picked up the phone. Uh, the nine, I, the nine autocratic style. Autocratic style. Nine one. Yeah. Picked up the phone and called the office, dictated a transfer letter for that guy. He said, you will go, he said, next day, you will be looking after the drainage system in Dispur. And I will supervise him there, but he's not fit for GMC office. <laughs> it's tough, right? I don't know whether you remember this or not. I almost pleaded with him, sir, don't do this. But he said, it has to be done. Because so many people are harassed. They are not getting their plans approved. Okay. So, I think what I, why I'm saying this, I cannot forget this because it was at, uh, very tough, but we did get the permissions later on. There are many other officers who assisted us in the process. The second was more humane style when he called the people, there was no electricity in this place practically. He was, I think, the chairman. Of you the Assam, Assam State Electricity Board. So, Assam State Electricity Board. Yeah. Thanks to him, we are able to get replace the, uh, what do you call this, 
transformers mm. there was practically low light no light in this place been now that was done in a very dialogue way with the officers concerned and it was done so what we are trying to say dear friends is we really have to follow different strokes for different folks it is called as already mentioned situational leadership situational leadership it will differ so don't impose one style for all people for all the time every day it has to change it will change and that is a leader a leader so i personally would like to thank uh, dr jarath for his coming today i think it is coincidence happy coincidence providence of god i don't say <laughs> coincidence providence is a divine providence that god has sent me here today so that i can also recall gratefully what you have done for this institution That's and also for your i think this all these styles i think in a very short time you were able to understand the different styles maybe now it with the google with chat gpt you can easily get into all these styles and begin to understand and apply according to your need so thank you dr jarath once again thank you very much thank you very much and it is my again my proud privilege and my profound pleasure to be a part of your celebrations so may jesus lord jesus bless us all thank you yeah. sir sir please be seated may I invite father ignatius sangmat to propose the word of thanks good evening dear friends after father vm has really spoken and thanked uh, dr sumit jarat i don't think i need to actually stand here in order to propose this word of thanks but whatever it is i am grateful to father cletus for having given me this opportunity to propose a word of thanks to uh, dr jarat um, who has spoken or rather who has taken time out of his busy schedule of being a judge and over coming over here and giving us this time uh, dear uh, dr jared we are deeply grateful to you for having uh, given us your time and your uh, insightful and uh, very enlightening uh, session uh, definitely it was full of theories as well as some models which we can definitely follow and i'm sure that uh, many of us are leaders in our own ways but definitely we have a lot of space to grow and we have uh, you know uh, great leaders here as as you mentioned uh, for the vm the good as well as also the great yes uh, yes uh, i would term, term him as as good as well uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, very true sir yes uh, as well as also you have mentioned about faculties who is the director here uh, faculties the great and uh, definitely we can say the same of you sir uh, dr sumit jarad the great definitely and uh, you have spoken out of your uh, experience as well as also vast knowledge that you have definitely we are deeply grateful to you and i on behalf of the gathering here i'm really grateful to you for having come over and for having spending uh, spend your time and also given us your uh, uh, thoughts as well as also your insights on leadership thank you very much dear doctor thank you we thank father ignatius as a token of our appreciation to you sir please accept our gamocha as well as a plant put your hands together for dr jarad